If I had to tell someone the most important thing about a Medicare supplement, it's to think about what's important to you and what are you looking for in your coverage. Whether that's having a plan that covers absolutely everything or something less expensive with more out-of-pocket expenses. Know what's important to you so you can tell your agent and they can find the plan that's best for you. Oxygen, oxygen. Never mind the expense. Now, now, Raleigh, it's not as bad as all that. Take it easy. Now, go ahead and take a deep breath. There, you see, you can breathe all right. I don't know. I didn't feel any air go down into my lungs. I got a hole in my neck. Yes, your mouth. Now, relax and tell me what happened. I swallowed a fish and it stabbed me. <laughs> Is that all? A little fish bone. A little fish bone. I got this hole thin in my throat with part of the runner. Hey, I can't get any air through my gills. Give me some oxygen. Now, wait a minute, Raleigh. Open your mouth. You want me to help you. Let me see. They are. Ah, oh. What's the matter? Now he's trying to go upstream. That bone. I can't. That bone must be a yard long. It hurts me worse when I'm sitting. Now, Riley, relax. There's no bone lodged in your throat. Although it did leave a slight scratch, but it'll be all right in a few hours. A slight scratch? Yes. Oh. Oh, is that all? Yes. Well, I guess I'll go back and finish the fish. <laughs> they don't give you any rebate at that lunchroom for what you leave on your plate. Uh, what do I owe you, sir? Nothing. This is on the Stevenson Aircraft Company. Gee, that's a good deal. I gotta get sick more often if it's on the cuff. Well, thanks a lot, Doc. Just a minute, Riley. You seem to have a condition much more serious than a fish bone. I have? Yeah. Open your mouth again. A chicken bone? No, open your mouth again. Say off. Ah. Wider. Hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. That serious? Well, not too serious. That is, if you have them out right away. Have them out? How can you see my appendix from way up here? <laughs> not your appendix, Riley. Your tonsils. Oh, my tonsils. Certainly. Well, I don't think I'll bother about having them taken out. I've had my tonsils since I was a kid. They're sort of attached to them. Now, just a minute, Riley. <laughs> if you don't have those tonsils out right away, something serious may develop. Serious? You on the level? Otitis media, septicemia, rheumatic, endocarditis, quincy. Quincy? Yes. So you see, an operation is really necessary. An operation? Yeah. But, Doc, couldn't I cure it myself? Oh, certainly not. Maybe if I read that book, The Quincy Report. Now, look, Riley. In your case, an operation is specifically indicated. But an operation? Maybe I could wait till I got ripe and dropped off. Oh, <laughs> stop acting like an infant. Why, a tonsillectomy is as simple as ABC. There's nothing to it. We just take a small instrument about, uh, oh, no larger than this. You see? And snip, snip, and they're out. I'll make a reservation for you at the hospital. Okay, let's say next year. No, tomorrow. Riley, those tonsils must come out. Hello, dear. Hello, Dumplin'. You're awful late tonight. Hi, Pop. Hello, Daddy. Hello, children. I hope you're hungry. I just fixed the most delicious. Riley, what's the matter? I can tell by your face, something's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Everything's great. Daddy, what is it? Tell me, dear. It's really nothing. I'd rather not even talk about it. I'd rather suffer. <laughs> suffer in silence. Oh, Riley, tell me, what is it? Peg, I'm a sick man. Oh, no, oh, no. Daddy. <laughs> daddy, oh, oh Daddy. Gee, Pop, you better sit down. Yeah. Peg, help me over to the chair. Oh, my sweet darling, of course I will. Here's a pillow, Pop. Thanks, Junior. Daddy, shall I put on your slippers? Okay, but I think you'll find them a little too large for you. Oh, sweetheart, what happened? I can't stand I saw the doctor today where I work. The doctor? About what? Peg, you've got to be brave. Prepare yourself for a shock. Oh, sweetheart, what is it? A lot of things. So, Ditas, end of the car, Ditas, and September Santa Anita. Oh, oh. That's what I'll get if I don't have my tonsils taken out. Tonsils? Is that all? Oh, Daddy, you're crazy. Gosh, Pop, I thought you were going to keep the pocket. Well, don't, don't get disappointed. Oh, 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 I tell you, I'm a sick man, a very sick man. My life is hanging by a thread. One tug and I... But I can take it. I've lived a good, clean life. And if I have to go, well... Oh, I'm certainly glad everybody's laughing. I'm glad my tonsils tickle you. Oh, I'm sorry, dear, but there's nothing to it. 
tonsil operation. Uh, nothing to it, she says. They're gonna slip my throat from air to air and rip out my tonsils, and she says there's nothing to it. Well, Pop, they may not even cut your tonsils out. They may burn them out like a kid at school. Burn them out? <laughs> nothing to it. Nobody's shoving a blow torch down my throat. Oh, it's a simple operation. You won't even feel it. <laughs> you can say that again, because I ain't even going to the hospital. Oh, Patty, it's an absolutely minor operation. Of course, be sensible. If your tonsils have to go, they have to go. Yeah, but I don't want to go with them. <laughs> Exaggerating things in your mind. Gee, Pop, I never thought you'd be a coward. A coward? I am not a coward. I'm just scared. I mean, a few kids and your mother. Here you are all alone, and tomorrow... Tomorrow? Tomorrow I go to the hospital. Well, cheer up, Pop. We'll get along without you. What? I mean, till you come home. Hey, don't worry about us, dear. We'll be all right. Well... That makes me feel a little better. Gee, you ought to know by now that I'm no coward. I'm not afraid of anything or anybody. Don't you remember that time at Ebbets Field when that six-foot umpire got the licking of his life? I was one of the 12 guys that gave it to him. Sure, Pop, I'm sorry. You're no coward. Huh. After all, what's a tonsil operation anyway? The doctor explained exactly how they do. Of course, they do them every day. Dozens of them. There's nothing to it. It's a cinch. All they do is they take a knife. It's about as big as... Well, it's about from... It's about... It's about from here to where Junior stands. And they shove it down my throat. And they chop. And they chop. And they... Uh, 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 uh. You say this! Thank you for coming to Oh, yes, Dr. Harvey. Hang up on him. Uh, yes, Doctor. Oh, he's fine. When? He'll be there. Thank you, doctor. Goodbye. That was Dr. Harvey. Phone to say he'll operate at 9 in the morning. I'm having that phone taken off. Now, don't start screwing again. The whole thing will be over before you know it. That's what I'm afraid of. When it's over, will I know it? Maybe I ought to see another doctor, Peg. One of those herb doctors. Look, Riley, you can't remove tonsils with herbs. And the doctor told you your tonsils have got to come out. Sure, it's okay for him to say my tonsils have got to come out. I'm wise to them, doctors. They think tonsils grow on trees. But well, why should he insist on an operation if it weren't necessary? You're not paying him. He gets the same salary from the plant whether he operates or not. That don't fool me. I know doctors. They love to operate. It's a disease with them. Oh, Daddy, it's nothing. I had my tonsils taken out when I was only six. You were too young to know what you were doing. Listen, dear, you need to get your mind off of it for a while. Why don't you go over and dab a while with Jim Gillis? The answer. It's funny, his lights are on. Hey, Gillis! Oh, Gillis! Gillis! Yeah, Riley? Answer the phone. I want to talk to you. Go ahead, talk. <laughs> this is Gillis. What are you doing over here when you're supposed to be over there? Your lights are on, so I tried the door, so here I am. Hiya, pal. How's about a little game of gin rummy? Usual type steaks. I don't know. You're too lucky. Luck nothing. Science. Ten cents a game? Okay, go ahead and deal. I already dealt. Those ain't fingernails you got in your hands. They're hot. I go. Hey, what happened to you down at the plant today? You went off the floor for lunch and never came back. Well, you see, it was like this. I had some trouble. My turn. I was worried about you. I didn't realize you was missing until suddenly the belt line started going faster. I had some terrible trouble. My turn. If Riley, my pal, is in trouble, that I couldn't stand. I know. You got fired. It was worse trouble than that. I got to go to the hospital tomorrow. My turn. <laughs> hospital? What? Hey, what's the trouble? There's nothing wrong with you, is there, pal? Or if there's anything wrong with you, you, my best friend, I... It's my tonsils. Tonsils? Is that all? Ain't that enough? My turn. You got a nerve aggravating me over a couple of measly tonsils? Ain't you got no consideration? Uh, it's easy for you to say. What do you know about it, Gillis? I know plenty about surgery. Why, there ain't a day goes by I don't read all the obituary columns. <laughs> My turn. Sorry. Taking out tonsils is a cinch. There's nothing to it. Any good doctor can perform that operation blindfolded. Blindfolded, huh? Well, my doctor, if he wants to get paid, better take a peek. <laughs> My turn. My hand don't seem to be getting any better. 
You're in bad shape, brother. Scared stiff. Now, why don't you relax? There's nothing to it. Oh, what do you know about it? Have you ever had your tonsils taken out? No, but believe me, I'd be glad to if I ever had the opportunity. Boy, would I love to go to a hospital and stay overnight. 24 wonderful hours away from my wife. Some wife. Ether is better. <laughs> That's it. Gin. Well, I like my wife. She's cute. And I like my tonsils. They're cute, too. Smile me. Turn your face this way. A little more. I want to tell you something to your face. You're a coward. I am not a coward. Then stop squawking. If the doctor says you got to do it, you got to do it. The whole thing will only take a minute. Only a minute, huh? Sure. They put you to sleep. And they open your mouth. They take a very sharp instrument. Down your throat it goes. Very delicate. Slash, slash, rip, 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 it goes. Yeah. I knew it. You're a coward. No, it is not killing Now, let me relieve your mind, pal. You know that Mrs. Bennett on the next block? My wife sees her in the market. Well, she had her tonsils taken out, and the very next day she was given a party. My wife told me. The next day? Huh? Sure, you don't have to take my word for it. Go ask the woman. And if you need courage, she'll give you plenty of it. I do not need courage. It'll be a dark and stormy day before Chester A. Riley has to go to some poor helpless woman for courage. <laughs> Somebody's coming. Now you'll see there's nothing to it. Not the niece, sir. Yes? Hello, uh, is Mrs. Bennett in? Who should I say is calling? Riley. Uh, Chester Ray Riley. I live down the street, and, um, we found out that Miss Bennett was just in the hospital. And the same thing's gonna happen to me. Oh? So, uh, well, you know, I thought maybe she could give me some advice. I'll tell her you're here. Come in, please. Who is that at the door, Matilda? It's a Mr. Riley from down the block, ma'am. He must have heard about you giving birth to the twins, and I think he wants a little advice. Uh, I guess his wife is expecting. I guess so, ma'am. Uh, well, then you'd better finish feeding the twins. I know how nervous a prospective father can be. <laughs> oh, Mr. Riley, come on in here. Uh, hello, Mrs. Bennett. Hello. Uh, this is my friend Gillis. Uh, how do you do, ma'am? How do you do? Go ahead, Riley. Get it over with. Oh, do sit down, gentlemen. Mr. Riley, I realize what a strain you must be going through. Well, I am a little nervous, but mostly on account of my wife. <laughs> well, naturally. After all, it's your wife's problem, too, isn't it? Yeah. Why couldn't this thing have happened when I was single? You're <laughs> <laughs> retaining your sense of humor. But now I realize how upset you must be. But just remember, this sort of thing happens every day. Now, take my case. I had two of them. Two of them? <laughs> Doesn't everybody have two? Oh, Mr. Riley. But now that it's all over, my husband and I are so happy. Would you like to see them? See them? You mean you brought them home with you? <laughs> and you know something? I can't tell one from the other. That don't bother me. I'm leaving mine at the hospital. Say that. Well, you'll love them just like I love mine. You know... My husband can't wait to get home each night and play with them. Plays with them? I don't say. I think I'd better be going. If you'll come inside, I'll let you hold one. Bare hand? Oh, you'll need both hands, Mr. Riley. They're quite large, you know. How large? Oh, they each weigh seven pounds. Seven pounds? I don't believe it. And they eat like little piggies. I, I shouldn't have come. They eat? Mrs. Bennett, what kind of tonsils have you got? They ought to be in vaudeville. What are you talking about? My tonsils. I gotta have them out. Tonsils? Oh, I see. Oh, the maid said, and I saw. Oh, I had my tonsils out a year ago. I was talking about my two baby girls. I just had twins. Just had twins? Yes, twin girls. Congratulations, ma'am. Oh, there you are. Come on, it's time to get started for the hospital. I'm coming, Peg. But before I do, I got something to say to my family. Peg. You sit here. But you'd be late. Babs, you sit there. And Junior. 
You sit there. Daddy, what's this all about? I got something to read to you. It's in this envelope. It says, Chester A. Riley, his last will and testament. <laughs> to be read after his funeral. So now I'll read it. Riley, will you please stop this? It's ridiculous. Sure, Pop. You're not going to kick off. Don't be so pessimistic. <laughs> now listen. It says... It says... I, Chester A. Riley, of sound body, do hereby cut up my entire estate to wit and ergo. The pig, my beloved wife, I leave outright my entire bank account, which has always been in her name. <laughs> also, for the past year, I have been kind of holding out a certain sum each week from my salary. Riley! For emergencies. I want my dear wife to have this $15, which you will find in the radio behind the third tube from the left. Oh, Daddy, please. Please, Babs, don't interrupt. <laughs> to my beloved son and pal, Junior, I leave... My good name. Is that all? I'm not finished. Also, I leave him my shoe trees I got for Christmas, which he will find in my sneakers. And for my darling daughter, Babs, who in the years to come won't have a father's protecting hand to guide her when she goes on dates with boys, I leave these two words. Watch out. <laughs> Signed, sealed, and delivered, Chester A. Riley. Those were my last words. Well, I hope so. Of all the nonsense I ever heard. Come on, now. Let's get started. All right, babe. Babs, be a good girl and take care of Junior. <laughs> Junior, be a good girl and take care of your sister. Oh, Pop, you're going to be okay. Oh, of course. Riley, Daddy. are you coming? All right, babe. But before I go, let me get one last look at my family. <laughs> Don't move. Stay right where you are. Gee. Seeing you like this brings a big lump into my throat. Those are your tonsils. Come on. Get them out. All right. Nice fan. Fan. Water. Water. Take my pulse. Take my pulse. I just took your pulse, Mr. Rowley. It's normal. Now stop worrying. You're perfectly normal. I am not normal. I know myself better than you do. Uh, why did I ever come here? Why did I ever let that doctor look at my tonsils? I'll never open my big mouth again. Now try to relax. Put us the way you act. You think you were going to die. I like to look ahead. Where's my late widow? She should have been back by now. Well, ask for some lunch. She'll be here when you get back from the operating theater. See? <laughs> Nothing doing. Nobody's selling tickets to look at me. They call the surgery room. Now I better get you ready. You mean my time has come? I'm going to give you something for your nerves. You'll feel better. You mean you're going to stab me with that dagger? Just a hypodermic needle, and it won't hurt a bit. Now, just turn your head, and it'll be over before you know it. They're murderers. Now, They're now, murderers. Just close your eyes. Ah! Ow! Ow! My arm! My arm! Get back in bed. All I did was swab your arm with alcohol. Now, lie still. Well, why don't you do it to get it over with? It's all done, Mr. Riley. I told you it wouldn't hurt. Oh. I guess it was a dull needle. Now, try to relax. The orderlies will come and get you with a stretcher in a few minutes. Where's my late widow and my children? They're waiting in the green room. Now, try to go to sleep. Sleep? Not me. I'm staying awake. Make sure that doctor knows what he's doing. I'm not taking any chances. Oh, nurse, please give this to the supervisor. Yes, Dr. Harvey. And are you ready for Mr. Riley? Riley? Yes, this case here. He's asleep. Oh, yes, the tonsillectomy. Well, I have a serious emergency that just came in. I won't be able to get to Mr. Riley until sometime this afternoon. You'd better take him back to his room. Yes, doctor. Hey, Mom. Mom. I just saw him wheel pop into his room. Then the operation must be over. Certainly so went quick. Well, I hope Daddy's all right. Shh. Let's go in. 
Poor thing, she'll asleep. It's the anesthetic. I guess it takes a dope a while to wear off. Where's the nurse? He shouldn't be left alone after an operation. All right, Gillis, it's my He's time. coming, too. Riley, dear, it's me, Peg. Where am I? You're back in your room. The operation's all over. It's all over? Yes, how do you feel? Oh, my throat. <laughs> oh, it's agony. But I can take it. Oh, no, dang. We better call the doctor. No, no, call the doctor. I'd rather suffer in silence. <laughs> oh, the pain. Oh, here. Take a oh, sip of water. I can't swallow. Oh, come on, Pop. Try. Right. Be brave. It might help you. Okay. Oh. Did it hurt? Oh. Oh, the pain. It's excruciating. Take another sip. Come on. Hey, that didn't hurt at all. You don't sound so hoarse, dear. Well, you sound more like yourself, hey, Daddy. I feel fine. I tell you, Peg, that modern surgery is wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad you came through it all right. And you were worrying over nothing. Oh, it's wonderful, but oh, I don't hey, understand how... Oh, and Peg, about the will. <laughs> I was only kidding about that $15. There's no $15 behind the radio. There isn't now. It's right here in my bag. <laughs> Hello, Riley. Oh, hiya, Doc. How are you feeling? I feel great. Doc, you certainly know your business, all right. Thank you. I feel good enough to go home. Well, that's fine. I'll send the stretcher right in. Oh, I don't need no stretcher to get to the bus. <laughs> Riley, you're certainly a car. Yeah. But don't worry, I'll have you out of that operating room in no time. <laughs> what operating room? I thought the operation was over. I certainly wish it were. I'm so tired, I can't see straight. Do you mean that I wasn't up? That I just, just, that I still got him? Let me out of here! 